Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'd like to show you something in the way of an unusual home-built telescope, at least much of it's home-built by me. Anyway, this is uh, an unusual scope with lots of very interesting, strange, quirky features. Uh, let me show you some close-ups before I reveal anything about it. Let me show you some close-ups and see if you can guess. If you're interested in classic telescopes, then you may want to try and guess and see if you can figure out what this is, what the various components are, uh, before I reveal all of that to you. And there's a few surprises going on here. This is a 60 millimeter refractor. Uh, it's a standard uh, kind of a generic TOA objective. It's got a uh, Polar X focuser back here and uh, I can't remember some sort of a generic finder here. This is a convertible telescope. So this is F15, but it can be separated right here and turned into an F12. Uh, should I desire to do that? Uh, it's got a standard Unitron clamp here uh, to hold it on. There are some other Unitron uh, bits and pieces here. Most notably is the Unitron clock drive. You may be able to hear it, and if you keep your eye on this thing, you'll see that that's moving very slowly. Um, now, this is actually a worm and worm wheel from a Unitron 3-inch telescope. And the clock drive was designed to work with a 4-inch telescope. However, I know from experience, I've tried it, um, the 4-inch, the, the clock drive is tunable. So you can tune this so that it will work with this. You have to uh, slow it down just a little bit, maybe 25% or so, so it'll work with this, uh, this gear ratio. Let me show you some of the features of this equatorial head. Uh, first of all, let's take a good look around it. I don't know what you call this style of a mount. It looks like a harp to me. I think there are other mounts that are more aptly described as harp mounts. Anyhow, this is a, maybe a crescent mount. Anyhow, this is uh, something I've been wanting to build for quite some time, is a mount like this. <coughs> I built I made all of this stuff with a couple of exceptions. Uh, this gear, this is a worm and wheel from a Unitron 3-inch scope. Uh, the setting circles are Edmund setting circles that I polished up that came out quite nicely. They're aluminum, but I polished them up and uh, they look pretty darn good if you ask me. But I made virtually everything else you see here, except for the knobs, maybe some of the knobs. Now let me show you how this works in terms of adjustment for latitude. If you want to change the latitude, there's a couple of locking bolts here. Once you unlock those, you can change the latitude. And there are actually two different ranges. Um, this gives you about maybe 10 degrees of latitude here from maybe 40 foot on up to... 50 or 60 and then you can replace these bolts take them out put them into other slots and then you get a, a more southerly latitude another 10 degrees or so 
that's how that works. Uh, these knobs are, of course, removable here. Oh, let me show you how the clutch works. Here's the, it's a very primitive friction clutch. It just grabs onto that. And if you, I think you can see, I'm turning the slow motion, it's moving. Loosen it up, and of course, it's disengaged. I have uh, friction control here and friction control here. I don't have the counterweight on right now, but there's friction control for that as well. Strictly, that's all just friction. I don't have, a, I don't have locks for those. Uh, so that's basically how that works. show you how to set up the clock drive for this thing. This is of course manual control now. In order to use the clock drive you have to remove you have to remove this slow motion knob. This little support goes on here. This support is adjustable so that you can position position it in a lot of different ways to allow for a good deal of flexibility. Let's just set it about there for now. This piece, there's a couple of gears inside this box of course. So the drive is going to come up here and turn this. So we need to get that attached to that shaft. I'm going to have to line this up a little bit. Now, here we go. We've got this thing mounted. We may have to make some adjustments here, like that, to position this in the right, at the right angle. It's pretty easy to do that. This arm really is not too much, doesn't function too much in the way of support. It's mostly to keep the thing from rotating. The support is right there. So, now we're all set to hook up the clock drive. We have to position it in the right position for this drive shaft here. Here's a look at the linkage mechanism. Comes up from the clock drive to the mount. Linkage mechanism is uh, designed with a certain amount of flexibility. It's got a, a lot of latitude. You can move things around. Let me show you that a little bit. If you um, change the position here, there's a, a sliding contact down here that gives you some latitude in regard to the, that position. And of course, you can change this angle a little bit as necessary. So it's a very workable, very useful, uh, easy, workable solution. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this unusual home-built telescope. Thank you very much for watching.